Hello everyone, this is AK. In this video, I'm going to explain you how I cleared Microsoft DP23 exam. DP23 is briefly called as Data Engineering on Azure. And if you pass this exam, you will get the knowledge of implementing Data Engineering solution on Azure. If you don't know about the term Data Engineering, it is one of the preliminary steps which was conducted before Data Science and Data Analytics implementation. Basically, Data Engineering is all about constructing the data ingestion frameworks, performing data cleansing operation and data warehousing process. So these are the activities which data engineers do normally in their day to day life. Uh, there are a lot of services and tools are providing support for this above works. Some of the services are Hadoop, Spark, Azure and GCP. Uh, Hadoop and Spark are open source framework here. It means if you want to perform the data ingestion process, for example, you can use Spark or Hadoop tools to do that and you don't need to pay for that. Apart from that, if you want to use the cloud deployments such as Azure, GCP or AWS, they have modified the open source services to their own platform. In case you are developing data pipeline activities on cloud, then you need to pay for that. The companies are using different cloud technologies such as Azure, AWS or GCP for implementing the data solutions. But according to the current market, AWS has the lead of 40% of data solutions and Azure hold 30% for data solutions. It doesn't come under which cloud you have to learn for implementing solutions. If you learn either one of the cloud, it is good, but the core skills you need to have is Python and SQL. These are the functional skills you need rather than the cloud skill. And if you are good at above skills, you can work on any cloud. Let's get into the topic of my roadmap to clear the certification exam. The purpose of the certification is you are validating your data engineering skills on Azure. If you look at the Azure certification exam, you need to score certain percentage on some important topics such as design and implement data storage, design and implement data processing, design and implement data security, and finally monitor the data processing and data storage. These are the very important skills, especially if you are taking the exam in 2022 and 2023, because Microsoft will update their exam syllabus every two years. It may change after 2023, I guess, because I cleared the certification this month. Uh, they said it will expire on October 2023. So you should have to think this side of exam angle also because, because if they update the syllabus in the middle of your preparation, then it is hard for you to answer the questions in some of the areas. So let's move to the first topic. For design and implement the data storage, you need to learn most of the data storage solution in Azure. Why? Because it has most number of weightage among all the topics and it is very important topic to focus. In my case, they mostly ask the questions on data like blob storage and Azure storage and Azure file storage. But other than that, there are a lot of storage services are present in the Azure. So you need to focus on that also. I will attach the respective learning resources links in the description. So based on the topic you are following, you can, you can easily access those resources from the links down there. So let's move to the next topic. Next topic is design and implement the data processing solutions. This is also an important topic next to above because in real time projects, you spend most of the time on data processing. In this stage of process, you actually tune your data for meeting the business requirement that you have. And it requires a lot of attention to learn the respective services workflow in Azure. Mostly you should be strong in Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. These are the two important tools that the Azure have. You can expect most of the questions from these two services uh, in, in your exam. Data Factory is kind of an ETL and ELT tool. Here you can do your data transformations with the data flows. Data flows are like a graphical widgets. You can drag and drop the required functions for your data to meet the business requirement. But on the other hand, we have the data warehouse that is called Azure Synapse Analytics. It will work like a data warehouse so you can write your analytical queries in Azure Synapse. But you have to understand one thing, in order to write the queries and process queries, you need some computation power to run the queries on Azure Synapse. So Azure provides serverless, dedicated and Spark pool computation to write the analytical queries. In case of my exam, I got the questions from dedicated and serverless pools. I didn't get any question from Spark pool. So for yours, it may be different. So make sure you learn all the computations in the Azure Synapse. So once you finish these services, you have to concentrate on data loading distributions and partitioning. It is also very important because they will ask you like uh, you will face a real time query in front of you and then you may see some of the missing columns in between the queries and they will ask you to choose the correct distribution and partitions column for your queries in order to complete the whole syntax. So other than that, you will face more questions from TSQL statements. TSQL is like one of the flavor of SQL that is primarily used in Azure Synapse. You should have the knowledge of TSQL commands to answer those questions in order to clear this part. 
After that, the most essential concept in modern data architecture that is called as data security. In this topic, you have to understand the data security concepts like data encryption models, data encryption modes such as row level and column level security and its commands. I got the questions mostly from these two types of security levels. So these concepts are mostly asked questions uh, for me in my exam. So the final concept is like monitor and optimize the data processing and storage solution. Most of the people will find difficult to answer this part because this part you will have the questions which are based on the real time scenarios which is like you will have the question based on some organization. So you act as a data engineer on that organization and you have to give the optimized solution for that scenario. So this is what you will get in this part and this part is very tricky because you will see the question only one time. After you saw the question, you can't able to see the question again and you have to answer nearly around five questions based on the knowledge of that scenario. I mentioned here overall approach and concept. Other than these concepts, there are a lot of things to cover for data engineering certification. You have to be theoretically strong and if, and if you are involved in end-to-end -end high scale data engineering projects, that would be enough for practical knowledge. Understand one thing, if you don't have any practical knowledge, I suggest you to avoid this exam because it is very hard for you to manage the questions unless you have the practical understanding. So don't waste your money on this exam without acquiring the practical knowledge. This exam is quite expensive. So that's all about this video. Here I shared my way of experience to clear the exam. It could be different for you. So basically I took one month of preparation time to solve this exam. And if you are a fast learner than me, uh, you could crack this exam within a one week. So all the best for your preparation. Thanks for watching and thank you. See you on next another week.